So in this video, we're just going to go through a very broad overview of the process of photosynthesis. We can first start, like we did with respiration, with the overall summary formula. Um, who does photosynthesis? Autotrophs, which include more than just plants, although plants certainly do photosynthesis. But there are also different species of bacteria, especially cyanobacteria that do photosynthesis. Not all bacteria, though, do photosynthesis. It's a very uh, diverse group. Um, there are also algae that do photosynthesis. Sometimes cyanobacteria and algae kind of make up a broad group that we just call phytoplankton in the ocean. Um, so maybe you've heard of that, producers in the ocean. So lots of organisms do photosynthesis. Uh, let's summarize the process. Um, just like respiration, this is an overall summary formula. So it, it isn't literally saying that carbon dioxide combines with water. Um, they do not ever meet, as it turns out. Water plays one role in the process, and carbon dioxide plays a different role at a different time, even. Um, so it's carbon dioxide and water are the two chemicals, and you also need light energy of some kind. It can be sunlight, but it can also be artificial light, like, say, in a... In a uh, uh, grow lights um, that sometimes uh, people will use. And you make sugar, um, we'll, we'll consider glucose here, and you also release oxygen gas. Um, as it turns out, it's the water that turns into oxygen, kind of the opposite of cellular respiration. Maybe you remember that in respiration, it was the oxygen that turned into water. Um, and here in photosynthesis, it's the carbon dioxide that turns into the glucose as well, just kind of the opposite of respiration. In fact, a great way to remember this formula is really in many ways you can kind of think of the left side and the right side being opposites. Um, so maybe really remember respiration because it's what you do and then kind of flip the reactants and products. Um, and you've pretty much got photosynthesis. You just need to remember the light energy too. Another way to remember photosynthesis is just to think about what plants need. They need water, they need light, um, and you just have to remember carbon dioxide as well. Let's go over the uh, chemical formula briefly. We can see that um, uh, these, these chemical formulas should be familiar to you by now. I want you to be able to tell me the chemical formula as well. Um, and technically you should be balancing these, but because we don't do much balancing of chemical formulas until chemistry class, I'm not too worried about that. But for every six molecules of CO2, six molecules of water are required, and that would make one molecule of glucose and six molecules of oxygen. Um, but just be able to tell me the chemical formulas and we'll be fine. Okay, so let's go into a little bit more detail about how photosynthesis works then. Um, and we have kind of two broad steps of photosynthesis, the light reactions and the Calvin cycle. I'm gonna liken the light reactions to kind of like a solar panel step. We're gonna see that the broad goal is to um, absorb light energy and convert it into something useful. And then we've got the Calvin cycle where we actually build the sugar um, using the energy we made in the first step. So let's go into those details. This is way too detailed for us. I'm just showing you kind of the diversity of different proteins. Most of these blobs here are kind of protein systems. Um, and this is remarkably similar across all different kinds of photosynthetic species. But we don't need to know this detail, so let's just kind of summarize the light reactions really broadly. Um, as it turns out, there's a really important molecule called chlorophyll. That was um, the, really the first step, because the first step is for the light energy to hit those chlorophyll molecules. And what they can do is they can convert that light energy into different forms of chemical energy eventually. Um, and they're really the first step. Light energy is always hitting us. Um, for example, light energy is hitting me right now from the room, but I really don't have those molecules that can do anything with the light energy, um, unlike chlorophyll pigments in plants. That's why it's so important. So we see that the chlorophyll is absorbing the light. It actually converts it into a different form of energy too that I really don't want to emphasize here in this introductory course. Um, but ATP is familiar to us now. As it turns out, we're going to make a little bit of ATP, but this ATP is not available to the rest of the cell. We're going to see that it immediately gets spent to help build the sugar that we're trying to eventually make. Also, just briefly point out that water is needed in this step. Water actually delivers something to the chlorophyll to help it out. And once it delivers that, it becomes oxygen gas. So that's the light reactions. Now let's talk about the Calvin cycle and see how the sugar is actually built. Um, this is, again, kind of a, a diagram showing all of the steps or kind of a uh, more advanced I just want you to see how many steps are involved here. This doesn't even show the enzymes involved, but there are certainly enzymes involved speeding up each step. 
So we don't need to worry about this, so let's just go to the overall summary. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to take the actual carbon dioxide gas and um, eventually combine it with a lot of other chemicals already there to eventually make a sugar, which is the ultimate goal. And those steps are going to require all of the energy that we made in the first step, so these types of energy are going to be spent. And really then what we're doing is we're kind of transferring the energy into the sugar that we've built. Remember how I've commented before about how sugars kind of store energy within their chemical bonds. Well, that's what we're really trying to do here. So just to uh, briefly remind you why plants would want to make sugar in the first place, well, certainly they're going to need that as a source of energy for cellular respiration. They're going to take some of the sugar they make and burn it to make the ATP for their cell um, to keep their cells going. Um, but they don't burn all of their sugar because remember that plants don't eat. So the, reason, the other reason they're making sugar is that they can actually use other enzyme pathways to convert some of those sugars into all of the other types of biomolecules that they need. Lipids, amino acids that make up proteins, nucleotides that make up nucleic acids. And so they're really building up their whole bodies from the sugar that they initially make. I think I've commented on this before, but again, just how amazing it is that when you see a plant grow, what it's literally doing is it's gradually building up its body um, initially from the carbon dioxide gas that surrounds it. Most of the mass of the plant that you're seeing is coming from the gas that at least initially it's converting into solid sugar. Okay, um, so just in summary, we talked about who did photosynthesis. We talked about the big picture, what goes in, what comes out. Make sure you know those formulas. And this is just kind of a nice picture summary as well, talking about the overall um, thinking about how the matter goes in a circle um, in photosynthesis and respiration. Respiration's in red here, so a reminder that respiration involves oxygen, and this says organic compounds, but we can think glucose. Um, and we can see that all, uh, both types of organisms, heterotrophs and autotrophs, can do respiration in red to convert it to the matter of carbon dioxide and water, and also ATP that they're not showing here. Um, and then plants, autotrophs, can do the green process of photosynthesis to convert that carbon dioxide and water back into glucose and oxygen. So just a reminder, matter goes in a cycle like we talked about in ecology. Matter can constantly go back and forth between different forms as we're seeing here, um, but energy only flows in one direction because remember that photosynthesis requires light energy, so light is going from the sun um, eventually being stored into the sugar, which eventually gets converted into the energy of ATP, and all of these energy conversions release heat along the way as well. Um, so I'm just trying to remind you of the cycling of matter, but the one-way energy flow um, that occurs in ecosystems.